A society that does not value nature is bound to crumble. We are destroying the planet. And if we don't start changing our ways, we're going to fail to realize our own potential individually. And furthermore, we're going to fail to inspire the generations that come after us. Something we cannot afford to do. We come from nature. Whether or not you believe in evolution, it's all around us. If you take a moment to pay attention to animals, you will notice that they are paying attention to things. They care. If you go and look at the studies currently being conducted on plants, you will know that they feel a lot of the things that we feel. They use a lot of the same chemicals that we use in our bodies in order to create neural connections or to have sensations in general. They see things. They adapt to their environment. They communicate. The things that we've thought for probably a very, very long time, thousands of years, are not sentient, meaning they don't have consciousness, have always had it. And I think it was rather selfish of us and foolish of us to assume that it didn't, considering it's been around for longer than us. The reality is, we need to start thinking about things in a larger scale. We're not going to last as a species if the very thing that we depend on, the thing that creates our food, our oxygen, our nutrients, is suffering. There's a lot of resistance to this idea, because for most of us, the thought process is, well, I don't have that big of an effect. And my argument is that if you believe that, how is anyone else supposed to believe that they have an effect? Right? Each one teach one. Individual responsibility is a difficult thing to come across and to tackle in our own life, sure. But I would argue it's probably one of the most satisfying questions to ask yourself. Because when you get to the answer, when you get to a sense of purpose in your life, you can wake up and give a shit about your time and not just squander it in the way that the wealthy don't want you to. So nature. How do we begin to get a better understanding for why it's so powerful? Spend some time outside. If you have the luxury of having a yard or some plants or a garden, go and take a look at what it's going through on the daily. See the life that it exudes, the, the fruits potentially that it gives you. And if you don't have that luxury, go and take a second and walk in the woods. 30 minutes. That's it. That's all I ask of you. And I promise you, you'll start thinking about things a little bit differently. So many people, I've seen so many people, successful people that are so bogged down in their careers that they fail to go outside and take a look at the very thing that keeps them alive. It's a sad reality, right? I mean, this world is absolutely glorious. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Any happiness that you've had in your life any amount of serenity that you've had in your life, nature shares that. We are in the context of this planet. The planet is not in our context. It's a hard pill to swallow because it's not what we've been taught. Frankly speaking, in schools in general, ecology isn't taught, philosophy is not taught. So how can we know as a society how important our surroundings are? We need to spend the time to think about it. You know, take some time to read about it. Take some time to grow your own plant, maybe your own food if you can. Fundamental survival techniques. And the funny part is, a lot of us are feeling lonely these days too, right? Well, I think that's also from a disconnect of nature. Because when you look at nature, you start realizing how interconnected everything is. How beautifully it functions together. Plants require the insects, just as the insects require the plants. The birds require the insects. The soil requires everything in order to be healthy. That's why compost is such a big deal. And the cool part about observing nature and the beauty, the intricacy of the ecosystems that are available to you is you realize how important your own social ecosystem are. Right? How important your own relationships are. And actually the method which you can build those relationships up. Right? 
So a bee to a flower, symbiotic relationship. Well, if the bee had a human mind, what do you think it would be thinking? Rolling around in a bed of cotton, right? In clouds, in a sense, and enjoying itself, just doing what its life purpose is. Imagine living your life that way. Imagine waking up every morning knowing exactly what you need to do in order to be happy and satisfied. Who you need to love. Who you need to get love from in order to be satisfied. These questions elude us a lot of the time and it's because we don't reflect on the things that are important. The things that are gonna keep this species alive and flourishing are not stressed in our education in any capacity because we're so bogged down in trying to make money in this capitalistic society. I am speaking from the Western perspective. And I don't know if there's any form of government that can uh, better serve human beings and democracy. I'm not sure, to be honest. It's difficult to know. But I do know that in any system, nurturing individual responsibility is probably the most important way to have sustainability and people that are happy. So build your relationships up. Take the time and make the individual responsibility in your head to build up your human relationships. And after that, if you decide that, hey, Tarab's words might have some impact on my life, you can start thinking about how you're going to use your life, your money, and your influence to start bridging the gap that humanity has created between itself and the very planet that keeps it alive. What is the first step in doing this? Well, I want you to sit down with a piece of paper and write down a goal that is going to take your entire lifetime to accomplish. Why do you do this? Well, the most wealthy people, the most powerful, the most charismatic and compassionate individuals always say that in order to achieve something in your life, you need to set a goal that is far above your means currently so that you can fall in a place that satisfies you. So set a goal. Number one, anything, literally anything. You want to go live on the moon? Do it. I don't care. But that is the first step in doing anything properly in your life is figuring out where you're going. So go write it down. It takes about 15, 20 seconds of just thinking. Maybe a little longer. The second thing, once you get that understood, once you have settled on something that really satisfies you, then think about what you already do have. The friends, the family, the house, potentially the cars. Think about the power that your money and your mind have in this society. Now think about the fact that if you decided to stop buying so much meat, if you decided to start buying more vegetables, start composting, start growing some plants for your local ecosystem to thrive, some watersheds, imagine the impact that that would have on the very people that you love, right? They could show up to your house and see something glorious, something that they'd have to go to the middle of the woods to go see. I had the opportunity to go to one of my mentors' house and he has, he's worked his entire life, old man. And he has a brilliant, brilliant backyard. And I remember walking through it and I was like, dude, this is like the Garden of Eden. I picked a fig off of a tree and ate it and it was the sweetest thing I've had in a very long time. And it felt good. Imagine fostering that in your own community, your own neighborhood. Imagine what the message that you'll be sending to the younger generations about what humans are capable of very important individual responsibility so take the actions to do what you need to do and third continue to educate yourself there is new science coming out every day there are probably at this point hundreds of thousands of documentaries made on nature 
and the, the prowess of human uh, ingenuity in, in terms of understanding the very things that created us. They're coming out with research now that shows how interconnected everything is. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful to see that, to witness that. Because then when you know that information, you see that everywhere around you. The more you know, the more powerful you become. And that power you can use to influence people. Influence the people that you love to uphold humanity. Right? Move forward. Create a life in which you are like a flower. And the bees can come to you and take what they need and leave. And you'll be just fine giving that way. So, set a goal, write it down. Something that is gonna take your whole life to come across. Two, take the individual responsibility to start changing the things that you do. Start changing the things that you consume and start changing how you approach waste in general. And three, the most important, continue to educate yourself. Educate yourself in any capacity that you can about the world around you. That's the difference between the people that aren't doing much and the people that are doing a lot. Knowledge. Be that person. We need you. We need you. And I hope you found this stuff interesting. I talk in this video about some fallacies that the human race has gone through. Essentially a uh, synopsis of the book Ishmael by Daniel Quinn. Something that uh, affected me fundamentally because for a long time I thought we were headed in a, in a direction that was kind of counter to the world around us. And the reality is that we have been probably for the last 10,000 years. So, I'll see you over there. And remember, actualize your potential.